Community York is for organisations from the volunteering community sector, for themes, healthy communities, engaged communities, inclusive communities and prosperous communities and organisations can apply for funding within those themes. Community York was over eight months, started in August, 14 organisations were successful. There's a wide range of projects, really kind of focusing on the community and getting people involved so that they do feel part of the community. Community York has been a great success. We've really enjoyed working on it, seeing all the organisations and the impact. We've seen some really great partnership working, organisations coming together, working together to really get over the barriers that people are facing and, and break those down so that the ultimate outcome is that they will get on in life and working together to do that. This funding has been a great opportunity to see the work that's going on in the city. We're using this funding as an opportunity to promote the good services that are out there that the voluntary and community sector provide. This funding gives organisations the opportunity to do what they do best, work with the people that work with, carry on the services that we're already doing. It gives them a springboard to try out new projects or new things they've been thinking of. It's also an opportunity for organisations to work together that they might not have worked with previously and together they can then make it more sustainable so that they can carry on the good work in the future. Through this funding we're also able to evidence the impact which is really important. We can actually show where the money has gone, we can see the fantastic work that's been going on throughout the year and there's a bit of a buzz about it and people can actually talk about something now rather than it being isolated within organisations. It's only the first year and this is just really showing the potential of what could be achieved. The food bank has been set up to help people in emergency crisis situations. So whatever that crisis may be, we're equipped to give people three days worth of food. So in the first four months of operating, uh, we have seen 298 vouchers come back in, which is fed in total because we feed everybody in the family. 575 people, it means we've given out 2.8 tonnes of food directly to people in need. So this is the entrance we use for the food bank. Um, we don't like to ask people to come all the way through the cafe where it's quite public. We do one check here uh, with a signature on the voucher that somebody brings. We just check with our list of signatures to make sure it is genuine and that somebody has issued that um, to them. And then we walk them through into, um, into kind of this room here where we have it set up as a cafe. So the funding has enabled us to employ a couple of members of staff on a part-time basis who have really taken this forward and launched the project. It's enabled us to buy things like this shelving um, and various other practical things just to, to launch us really. Before we had the funding this was just an idea, the funding has enabled us to actually make it happen. We didn't want to become a service where people were depending on us long term for food. We're set up to help people in crisis situations only. 84% of people who access the food bank do so only once and then we never see them again. I would estimate that at least 9 out of 10 people we see are already having that crisis, the underlying crisis resolved by somebody usually the person who's given out the voucher. So they come to us, we're a stopgap. We're just to see them through until that crisis has ended. A lot of people assume that we only feed homeless people. Uh, in reality, very few people who access the food bank are homeless. 43% of people who access the food bank do so because of a benefits related issue. Basically, I missed an appointment at the job centre, so my money was stopped for two weeks. So the CAB said, come down here and then they, they can help and for people like this in this situation is very important if it went then people would be literally without things it's a big help all around without this I wouldn't have been able to have the kids or eat really it's decent food at the end of the day anything's good my kids aren't fussy <laughs> it's the one good thing thank you guys yeah, thank you very much. they are making a very big difference to people in their lives people who really do need the assistance the reality is, for some people who come to the food bank, I'm not sure where they would get food. I'm Peter Bagley and I'm the manager of the uh, 
target training at Age UK. It's mainly for older people, but every, anybody's welcome, obviously. What it aims to do is to teach them the basics of using a computer. A lot of older people would like to keep in touch with their grandchildren, and uh, email is obviously a very important thing. A company of wife who wants to learn from the basics, I thought I'd come along. My name is Mrs Mary Shaw. I'm the wife of Derek Shaw. <laughs> I've tried two or three different times to have a go at learning computer, but I haven't been very successful. I think I'm being a bit more successful here. It's essential now. I think uh, computers are like telephones were 30 years ago. There's such a lot of new technology in the past five years even. It's just gone whoosh, and we're left behind if you don't try. So I just thought I'd have a go. <laughs> Every advert you see on telly says go to www whatever it is. Uh, and. Uh, a lot of older people just look at the screen and think, what the hell is that? Go to this and go to that. They don't even know what go to means. And Well, I didn't either. Registering, applying for anything, it's all, a lot of it is done online. And most older people, it's, it's a foreign language. I've just recently retired, bought myself a laptop, and I don't know nothing about it. So I'm just starting to learn what things do about it. I've learned how to do various different things, uh, Facebook, uh, shopping online, that sort of thing. Um, it's making me more confident to be able to do things with my own laptop at home. Open the laptop. I have my grandchildren come every every weekend and bum, 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 on the laptops. And they're only about 12 or 13, make me look stupid. But they, they teach all this in school now, don't they? You're catching up with them now, are you? Well, I think I've got a long way to go. When you get older, you, you can become isolated. I ain't got a great deal of people my age, friends. It provides, you know, a, a focal point for coming and meeting people, new people, and learning new things, obviously. It's got to be for the better to meet different people all the time. It's somewhere to go. Isn't it? You can meet new friends, although I've got my friend there. <laughs> exercise for the brain. No matter what you're doing, it's exercise for the brain. Without the funding, we, we probably wouldn't have been here now. It's one of these things that um, is snowballing, very well used. Yeah, I think it's a lovely idea. It also provides a social side to it, and we've had so many people have made new friends, and uh, without the funding, we would, we would no longer be operating. It's as simple as that. The Jack Rain Foundation is based in the heart of the community and we try and help everybody. And the kids that we work with during the day are some of the worst disengaged kids throughout York. This is like a last chance saloon for them. So for them to get involved in something like this was a real bonus. The project was to get us out into the wider community and tell people what we did, show people what we did, that was the main thing because a lot of people still don't know who we are and what we do and the changes that we can make with these young people in the community and it was also to involve people past and present, give them something to engage in. There was two projects that we worked on with Inspired You. The first one, a arts project which involved a large mural upstairs in the building which engaged the kids, the daytime kids, it was to show their role models, it was involved some of the history of the role models with Jack and his wife Inga. The, the project involved working with a street artist and it was something different because it was a graffiti style. The kids were more, seemed more engaged with it. There was definitely a sense of pride. It's a lasting mural that's going to stay there for, you know, a lifetime. It's positive in the way it's, it's shown on there with the role models. They loved it. There's a lot of questions about it because the new people that come maybe don't know why it's there so it's a conversation starter it's brighten the room up it's 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 just positive vibes up there now and then there was the film which involved some of the past members who passed through our doors to start with it's all about you it's about the effort you put in to start with i didn't really know where the film was going to go and what i was going to find out the history I knew who Jack was, but I didn't know it connected all the dots for me along the way. How we do exactly the same as what Jack and Inga did. 
back in the day. It's more or less a mirror in the 21st century of everything that they were doing. A very emotional journey, listening to people's stories, old memories and feelings and stuff. Yeah, it was, uh, it was very emotional at times in a positive way because you could see the positives that people have got out of it and were getting out of what we do today. Community York, the next round is open now. It's open to all types of community and voluntary organisations. If you've got an idea for a project or you're currently offering a service, just get in touch with us. We can talk you through it, apply for it.